I bid you a grand rising. What you just experienced was the sound of silence. You see, when you're silent, you can hear what other people are saying. When you're silent, nobody knows you're there. When you're there all along. If you really want to find out what people are really about, observe them when they don't think you're there by being silent. And see people in their true form. I've been silent because I've been watching and listening to you. So on this morning mental, I just got one real simple thing to say. Stop. Grown folk action. Cut the bullshit short. Get off my page. Stop running around behind me. Stop thinking about what I'm doing. Stop worrying about the NFAC. Stop going back and forth. Stop trying to imitate me. Stop trying to copy what I'm doing and I've done. Forget about all of that. Because I've been sitting here watching and listening. You ever try to wonder what it was like when God brought his wrath down on certain groups in the Biblios, the Bible? You ever wonder why he could be so angry that he would wipe out an entire city, that he would wipe out an entire nation, that he would wipe out everybody. You have to really wonder why they keep preaching to you and trying to teach you that you serve a creator who's all loving, all embracing, and all forgiving. When our history shows that whoever the creator is, that creator gets to a point where they get frustrated with you and just starts all over again. 2020 will go down in history as one of the most pivotal, tumultuous, vigorating, exciting, unprecedented periods in human history. And when that story is told, there will be those who will read that story and say, well, what happened? Because nothing changed. And you will be an old person then. And you will be sitting there trying to tell them, I was there. I remember. I, too, asked myself what happened. Are you ready for your vaccine? Because mm. you still ain't ready to fight back. Mm. Are you ready for another lockdown? Taking away your freedom? Or should I say you giving your freedom because someone told you something? You ain't seen no proof of it in front of your face, but because they told you and you're not strong enough to wake up and fight for yourself. Like I told you, some of y'all, y'all don't want to be free. Some of y'all even think you're free. Some of y'all tried to get free and it didn't work. Others don't know what the meaning of freedom really is. So you just chiming in with the rest of the yo-yos. But one thing that I've learned in this whole process 
is that whether it's a calling or an anointing, it's not yours. But throughout the entire process, you still exist. Hell, even a person possessed by the demon gets to come up every now and then to say, hey, I'm in here. Somebody help me. Then they go back into being possessed. 2020 is coming to a close. An episode in human history is about to come to a close. Some of y'all still sitting on the sidelines waiting for somebody else to win the game so you can run out on the field and celebrate like you did something. I'm on my morning mental. I can't stand two-faced people. And this is not entertainment. I'm not here to entertain you. I never have been here to entertain you. I'm going to see how entertaining it is. Right when you begin to realize that everything that you've been told is coming true. And there's nothing entertaining about it. I would love to take my head and stick it in the sand and just revel in the fact that, hey, I'm going to celebrate a birthday and hey, I'm getting an award and hey, we starting to get the donations that could actually make a difference. Hey, I could do that. The same way the creator could sit back and rejoice in the creation of this place and everyone in it and every living creature in it. He could sit back and rejoice over that. Like, you know what? Job well done. I did this. I did this. But he's not. He's not. My morning mental this morning to you is very simple. Stop walking around and acting like you have control. You don't. You don't even know if you're going to be alive in the next hour. Let alone can get comfortable and think that you can sit on the sidelines while the game is unfolding. Because the answer is yes, there are still stupid people in the world. Yes, there are still cowards in the world. Yes, there are still people who are so stupid that they'll fall for any line that someone speaks to them as long as they say it in a certain fashion. Or just like peer pressure, a lot of people just follow the crowd, even if the crowd is going off a cliff. You're comfortable in the sand. You want to put your head in the sand. Something else that I noticed while I was watching you is that a lot of people think that they can imitate an anointing. You see, Yeshua had these problems. Even though he was walking around simply trying to tell everybody the truth and to get them ready for what was coming. And when the people didn't believe him and they doubted him, he did things. He didn't say things. He did things that showed people, look, let me show you who behind me. Mm -hmm. And the people f at first, they was, you know, the honeymoon. Y'all know what the honeymoon is. The honeymoon phase came. Oh, they was in love with him. They were lifting him up. Everybody thought it was a new day. Everybody flocked to him. He had huge crowds saying, this is our savior. And all of this, they lifted him up. And then when it didn't turn out the way that they wanted it to, they turned on him. Yes. They turned on him and then they killed him physically. Once that was done, they realized at that moment that they fucked up and had been running around since. Half of them claiming they sorry, the other half claiming that they didn't know, and the other ones just kept in the dark.
it's pitiful. It is. So though I should be in a celebratory frame of mind, I'm not. I am disappointed in the descendants. I am so disappointed. Because y'all remember that episode in the movie where the dude walks up and he, he was going to quit his job. But before he did, he cussed everybody out there to let them know how he really felt about it. Y'all remember it. It was F you, F you, F you, you cool. And F you. I'm out this month. And he left. Y'all remember that scene? You don't want nobody to help you. Yet you get mad when the people who are trying to help you decide they don't want to help you no more. You don't want to change. Yet when somebody decides that, okay, well, stay the way you are, all of a sudden they're your enemy. You don't want to listen to the point where you have to put your opinion on the back burner and just go with the flow because somebody else has already done the thinking. You don't want to do that. But the moment that that individual doesn't want to think for you anymore, you know, all of a sudden you want to crucify them. You want someone to cut the chains. You want someone to give you your fair share of what you think you deserve. You want someone to tell you that things are going to be okay on the other side. But if you don't agree or if you don't like the way it makes you feel or if you find out you can't even deal with the solution in your current configuration or most importantly, when you find out that you don't qualify for the solution, yet you are part of the problem. Then all of a sudden it's let's try to destroy it and tear it down. If there's one thing that is written in the scriptures, it says my people perish. Stop right there. Perish. My people perish die. My people dissolve. My people disintegrate. My people no longer are considered a people, just a bunch of persons on the loose. When all of those things happen, you do it for lack of knowledge. Everybody's walking around thinking that they're as smart as the next person. Or we quick to open our mouths to people not knowing their education, not knowing their background, not knowing their history. Hood folks holler at me. Isn't it amazing to you when you run into somebody who ain't never lived in the hood, who doesn't know what it's like trying to talk to a person that is an expert and living in these oppressed areas. And they, they really think that they can tell you. Don't you hate when white people. Try to talk to you about the black experience. Just because they know some black people. Or because they lived around some black people. Or because they don't hooked up with a black person. Or you know. They, they assume. And then you look at them and say. You know nothing about being inside of this skin. So miss me with that bullshit. Don't y'all know that half the people that run around screaming Black Lives Matter don't have a clue what the fuck they're saying? Don't you know that your actions speak louder than your words? Don't you know that you give more benefit of the doubt and more respect to people who want to see your bones in the earth than you do to the ones that are trying to see that there are new bones to be made? Y'all quick to talk about you hate the police. Oh, the police this and the police that. and Oh, the police. Really? That's interesting. As soon as your ass get jammed up, who do you call? The police. That's interesting. Y'all quick to do that. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, y'all quick to talk about how much you hate the police, how much you would like to defund the police, how much the police done did you wrong. But instead of getting together and being your own police, you still punk out 
and call the police when your ass get in a sling. But if somebody else comes along and tries to do something for you that doesn't look like them, you tear it down like you've done since you've been <laughs> a black community. You you begin to criticize and then you go back to sleep and do nothing. So this is my morning mental to you this morning. I want you to remember what you were doing one year ago today. Really think about it. What were you doing one year ago today? Who was you loving on one year ago today? Who were you hating on one year ago today? And now I want you to remember that a year from now, if we're still here, that you remember 2020 as the year that the black community, because I'm only talking to the black community, that that was the year that you showed the world you ain't changed a bit. And they're happy with that. They thought you changed. Yep, they, they thought that y'all had finally, that they said, uh oh, the giant has woke up. Uh oh, the giant is walking. Uh oh, the giant done armed itself. Uh oh, oh, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe, wait a minute, wait a minute. okay, they, there they go with that bullshit again. Y'all relax, relax, relax. And as for me, I've got to sit here and be a witness. I've had the opportunity to now understand how we ended up where we are today. And even with all of the money that we have, even with all of these highly educated individuals that we have, even with all the fire and fury that we bring to the table just because of what we are, we still suffer from the disease of we don't know who we are, because if we knew who we was, then we would know who we belong to. And if we knew who we belong to, we would understand what the expectation is of us, even if none of our predecessors did it. However, like I said in the beginning, you have to understand or try to understand the mentality of the creator. When the creator gets pissed at you. And wipes the whole slate clean. I never understood why they say many are called but few are chosen. I do now. I never understood why it said that a third of this would be burned up and a third of that would be would die. And I'm like, well, we we'll kill all the people. I now understand why there are so many people who get into an uproar when I talk about the 12 tribes. Because it means you are not a member. I now understand even more what they mean by much folk. People who just come along, don't really know the whole story, don't even know how to get the whole story. And I've also learned something else. And this is probably the thing that I've learned the most. And it's going to hurt. Oh, I'm going to hit you this morning. This is going to hurt a lot. I have learned that black men are the worst enemy of the black race. Suck on that because it's true. And every brother that disagrees with what I just said, if I look at the track record for the last Seven months since I popped up in on your radar. Your actions will speak louder than any words that you can utter out your mouth. Because we are at a time right now that the army of Yah should be standing together, standing tall, flying the flags of many faiths, flying the flags of many groups, flying the flags of many colors, flying the flag 
of many groups that have said that even though we don't get together normally, we are going to stand as it is written against any type of oppression, not sit here and continue to eat, sleep and shit under the same rules that were provided to us and listen to the same laws that are given to us. And now I'm prepared to take the same injections that they're going to give to you and act like it's going to be OK. Y'all want shit to be OK so badly that you don't want to put in the work to be OK. You don't had your ass handed to you for the last 400 years. You don't know how to go and take that ass back. That's what I've learned. It's a two way street. I learned some shit about y'all, too. So I want to say this. I hope you're happy with your results. Because when it's all said and done, those who went along with the program will be the ones you can be trying to call. Those who actually got over their fear and said, listen, I'm just going to have to lean and depend and trust. Those who understand that some people, just because they've given up on life and given up on us as a race and given up on our children and given up on our women and given up on everything, just because they have and they know that they don't want to be lonely and stand out like a sore stomach and look stupid. You join them and you follow them and you remember you chose your path. It's no need to run over here to see what I'm talking about and then run over there to see what they talking about. Like you in the middle, like you won't be touched because it's not me or the person you're running over to see to make up your mind. You're failing to watch the third person that we're talking about that's about to reach out and wrap their hands around your throat and choke the life out of you. And they already got their hands on your throat and that went right over some people's heads. I'm not going to be rainbows and sunshines and smiles all day when I'm watching the clock tick down to the fourth quarter. Y'all let the police come in your neighborhood every day, roam around until some shit happens where they run up on somebody and they shoot them or they they do some fucked up shit to them. And then all y'all want to get out in the street and walk around like you mad, but don't do nothing. But the moment. That somebody said, well, I don't think we should have the police up in here. And he'd be like, no, we need the police. Why? Because who's going to who's going to enforce the law? Who's going to protect us? That's rather interesting. You would prefer that if the police came in your neighborhood, was friendly with everybody, got to know everybody, tried to understand everyone's situation and recognize crime before it happens, as opposed to cleaning up the crime after it happens. That's what you all would like. Y'all don't sit around and saying, I don't, I don't really rock with the police. Why? Because they ain't shot nobody yet. I, I thought they was going to come in here and start shooting up people. You know, they, I can't rock with the police. Why? Because they're not acting like criminals. I, I wanted them. I thought they supposed to act. Y'all y'all ain't going to sit there and do that. But that's exactly what you've done to the NFAC. You think that just because a group of black folks didn't get in the street and do what you don't have the backbone, the resources or the training to do that because it didn't happen and you couldn't sit there on the fence and spectate and speculate why you didn't get your hands dirty. You too busy trying to figure out when they're going to put football back on TV, which is a mindless distraction. When my sitcom going to come back on, which is a mindless distraction. Girl, when I'm going to be able to go and get my tracks done and get my eyelashes glued on again because that's a distraction. Oh, when when the bros gonna get together and dress up in the same colors and walk around with some Greek signs when we're not Greeks at all? See, that's a distraction. Matter of fact, when is life gonna get back to? You thought I was gonna say normal. When am I gonna be able to go back into my cage and be a good captive? This experience has taught the children of the Most High who never understood why they killed Yeshua. If this didn't teach you through experience and your feelings, then nothing will teach you. And you deserve just what you get. You don't want to hear this from me this morning because I ain't come to make you feel good. I came to bring you some truth. If you thought you had the option to agree or disagree with me or anybody else. If you thought 
you have the opportunity to choose a side because you just want to be a comfortable Negro like you always been. You can't believe you put in all this time and all this work and you built up shit that don't even belong to you. It's on loan. You did all of this. And how dare somebody come along that's going to make me have to tear down what it is that I done built when you ain't built shit. All you did was move some belongings around and some things around that belong to somebody else and made it look good. How can I say this? Because they can come in your home and take it away from you in a split second and there's nothing you can do about it or that you're going to want to do about it. It ain't no different. But for me and mine, and now I'm speaking to the other side of the coin, those of you all who do understand, those of you all who, who, who read the message, those of you all that are getting the visions, those of you all that are having the dreams, those of you all who are seeing the fo 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 everywhere, those of you all who are now sitting there saying, oh my God, he did tell us this was going to happen and now it's happening. If your only reaction is to sit around and go, he was right and that's it, that's the wrong reaction because you failed to discern the scriptures where it talks about the king and the writing on the wall. Y'all don't know where that story came from. I have been having this vision. And I need you to interpret it for me. Well, what's the vision? I keep seeing this writing on the wall. What does it mean? Y'all know this comes out of scripture. The writing on the wall was a message to him. That your days are numbered if you don't get your shit together. So, as I roll with my folks, and I have to say it like that. As I roll with my folks, and my folks know who they are, for real, for real. I'm going to show you what I mean. Well, we, as we count down to Atlanta, Georgia, November 28th, you know, the I Am Black award show that everybody knows is sold out. And as we roll down the countdown as to the celebration of myself moving into another year of existence, on this planet and those who will be there to celebrate with me. I find out that even within the NFAC and within the circle of believers, we still have people just like the first group that I talked about. Sidebar, we said that you could not get in to the party, if you want to call it that. You couldn't get into the celebration if you did not know a member of the NFAC. The outcry from that has been so great that I am reversing that. If you support, if you believe, if you have been changed, if your life has been affected in a good way and you just know that if it wasn't for the fact that if you hadn't tuned into the morning mental or facts over feelings, if you are one of those people, if you consider yourself to be one of the students that have sat at the feet while the crumbs have been fed, not from me, but from the most high, you are more than welcome to attend. Just realize that if you bring that much energy of Yah into one place, anybody that represents the energy of the enemy, you will be immediately consumed on the spot. I'm not going to say it. They're going to do it to you. So we're removing that, that, that um, stipulation. It is open to the public. Just remember, if you can't handle the level of screening that we're going to do to get you in, if you don't want to be touched, you don't want your stuff searched, if you don't want to get... Uh, to answer a couple of questions, if you don't want to be told you can't bring certain shit in with you, don't waste our time. Don't even do it because you will find out that we're not the police. We're not any of those other groups that you may have had to deal with getting in to an event. You will find out it's worse than the TSA because, yes, threats have been made. Yes, there are some people who are so in denial about what we're going through as a people that they would rather do to all of us, including me, the same thing that they wanted to do to the Christians when they tried to crank up that faith a few years back. 
They're going to do the same thing. They want to tear it down because they're angry. They're mad. They're full of emotion. But if you want to come out, and I know there's some people that have been asking, um, they want to bring gifts. They want to show appreciation. Uh, there are some people who just want to be in the presence of a group of like-minded believers and enjoy the energy and the aviance. In spite of everything that the enemy is doing to destroy our world right now, you are more than welcome. Additionally, the award ceremony. The award ceremony is probably going to look like Beirut out there because I opened up the floor that all of my NFAC members are welcome to attend, whether you inside or outside. Y'all know if we inside, we suited and looking smooth. But if we outside, we suited and booted. I'm letting you all know. But this ain't for everybody. And I'm beginning to realize that it never was. I understand what he means now by the chosen, the elect. <laughs> I really just got that. Because I always thought that all of us were chosen and that we just needed to wake a few people up. That's not the case. So when you don't hear from me, I'm watching you. I'm listening. And I can see that a lot of the same people that are sitting on here with me this morning. Some of y'all just two face it. But that's OK, because two face it won't get you into the kingdom. Two face it will just get you acknowledged. And we understand who you are. So when you get kicked out of here, don't come begging me to let you back in. Don't be writing emails telling me something went wrong. And you don't know why. Because see, we, we've been observing you. You're not the only one who's a master of disguise. So when you get exposed for who you truly are, don't trip. Be that. Own that. Because there's nothing that's not authentic about what has happened or what's happening over here. We don't want everybody. We just want the chosen. Think about that as you go through your day. Tonight on the morning on the, on facts over feelings, I think you might find it be rather interesting. I would be there if I were you. You have a wonderful day. Don't let nobody tell you what you already know in your heart of hearts. That this is our time. I hope you're ready to get that vaccination. Because I gave you every opportunity to avoid it. And it's only going to take all of us on a united front. All. When I say all, I don't mean just your group. I don't mean just my group. It's going to take all of us. Otherwise, <laughs> I hope that you have watched my series uh, back in the day from April. The needle or the bullet. Because you're about to live this shit. And just like I told them before. I'm going to sit back and I'm going to enjoy the whole show because you didn't have to be here. And that's tough love for you. I bid you shalom. Have a fantastic day. And don't forget, if ain't nobody told you, Grandmaster J loves you. Even if you hate me. Have a great day.